Hello, it's Scott Manley here, and once again, I'm working with Charlie on aircraft. Unfortunately, it is Charlie Kerman. I decided to see how small an aircraft I built, I could build, and so this is the smallest thing I can come up with. It basically consists of five parts. That's the cockpit, two wings or two canards that we actually have control surfaces. We have a fuel tank, and then we have a turbojet, and it actually flies pretty well, as in it's incredibly responsive and will dash you into the ground if you so much as push the wrong key too hard. But uh, nonetheless, I actually managed to get a decent amount of flying out of this using just the keyboard. I wish I could get my joystick working, but I'm really having some weird issues with the dead point. Uh, it works fine in other games, but it's not working so well in KSP. Nonetheless, look, here we are buzzing the, the um, space center at uh, under 100 meters. I mean, that's 100 meters above sea level, so that's 30 meters there. 100 feet there, not bad, huh? Let's uh, power up and just see how high we can take this thing. This thing will, of course, have amazing thrust-to-weight ratio. We're going more or less vertical. We're already above 200 meters per second. Let's just take a look from the, the cockpit, see what uh, Charlie is seeing. Coming up, we're getting up to almost 5 kilometers up now. And 300 meters per second at six kilometers. Will we break the sound barrier in vertical flight? Yes, there we go. That's the speed of sound in vertical flight, more or less. Just keep going up. Now, 400 meters per second, still gaining speed. 450, and I think our velocity is peaking out. We're like 15 kilometers up, and and we're starting to lose velocity. So our thrust to weight ratio is not able to overcome the force of air resistance and gravity. So I'm just cutting my engine before I, so I don't waste fuel. Now, of course, we're still coasting upwards at some remarkable rate. Uh, I think this is possibly the highest I've managed to take an air breathing engine. Could probably go further if I kept that engine on a little longer, but it's not bad, I have to say. There we go, 25 kilometers, might get up to 26. I mean, you're 26. The, a lot of people have trouble getting that high on rockets. I, I just, no, a lot of beginners have trouble getting that high on rockets. 27 kilometers, and we're still going upwards, although we are just starting to peak out here. 27, 354, 27, 354. There we are, and now we are plummeting back towards the Earth. And we are going to fire up the engines once we get lower. Well, uh, where else? Well, I guess we can now go for... Well, we can pull out of this dive and uh, get ourselves back under control. Uh, with this, you really need to turn on, press the T key to enable SAS. And uh, the caps lock, hit the caps lock so you enable fine control. And that's just about controllable. It's probably really easy to fly using a joystick, but as I said, my joystick is not behaving for me. Uh, down below 20 kilometers, we could probably fire up the engine soon, starting to get something, but I'm gonna wait for, you know, maybe 14 kilometers or so. Let's see where we go. You can see all the debris scattered around the space center from previous experiments gone awry. There we go, starting to pull out of this dive here. Uh, we are plummeting towards the ground at quite a clip, like 0.4 kilometers per second. So so uh, we will probably take a good amount of time to slow down. You see those canards pitched right up trying to hold the nose up. Uh, the way I built this is, of course, I put this together in the vehicle assembly building, and then I just made darn sure that the center of lift exactly matched the center of mass. Uh, if you get it off of that, uh, it can be highly unstable. But yeah, we got this. We're out of the dive. Let's uh, bring it back up to altitude and take it out over the continent. And see how fast we can get it in horizontal flight. Eight kilometers up. Ah, uh, yeah. So I've been getting Charlie Kerman a lot. Um, I'm quite happy because he has flown some of my craziest contraptions. And he's practically the counterpart to my father, Charlie Manley, who built one of the some of the more... Uh, bizarre aircraft and referred to uh, my use of struts as building string bags uh, yeah this is uh we are not building world war one era biplanes so there we are going into horizontal flight we're up to 
570 meters per second. Let's see if we can get above Mach 2. 500... Uh, okay, got to get a little more height. So we're kind of bottomed out here. So we're going to go higher where the air is thinner and there is less air resistance. We'll probably be able to get decent speed up to about 14 kilometers. After that, though, the air thins too much and the jet will lose power. So it's a case of trying to balance the altitude with the, the, the wind resistance with the amount of power. So we're up to 630 meters per second. Uh, we're definitely putting some uh, steam in. Wow, we're really picking up speed now. 666, the speed of the devil. What do they say about flying fast? It's chasing the devils. There we go, 700. We're getting very close to two times the speed of sound. Uh, 720, 730. 740, now I'm going to dive a little, 750, 760, 775, 780, it's definitely twice the speed of sound, assuming that the curb and atmosphere is anything like the Earth's atmosphere, which is probably a bad assumption given that the planet Kerbin is clearly nothing like the planet Earth. Okay, so I'll slow this down. We'll try and turn this around, head back to base, see if we can uh, do some other maneuvers. It turns really slowly out of this. It's really, you can feel it biting into the air with a, as hard as it can. Even then, it's taking a long time to kill the velocity that it has. Down below 10 kilometers. It's easier to turn as you get lower again because the air the air gets thicker and it grabs onto the vehicle a little more. Uh, this would probably be a whole lot easier as well if I could fit um, one of the, the avionics clusters, but of course that would then make it a six-part vehicle, which is far from ideal. Uh, I, I mean, I'm going for the simplest thing possible and adding avionics would make it more, di more complex. Let's try and uh, let's try and buzz these mountains. See how close we can get to the mountains without hitting them. This can only end well, huh? Oh, okay. So I'm just cutting power a little because I want to get a better clue as to where this mountain is. You don't have orbital projections in in this view. <laughs> it might actually be nice. Of course, orbital projections would show us falling straight towards the ground since we're moving at suborbital velocities. Uh, I mean, if you've ever looked at the internal save files, even when you're sitting flat, you know, still on the launch pad, you actually have orbital parameters. It just happens that those orbital parameters are essentially falling straight towards the middle of the planet with a slight amount of uh, lateral velocity because you are, uh, because the planet is rotating. Okay, now we're getting over these mountains and there's a ridge there. I just, I tr want to try skimming this ridge and no more. It's looking good so far. Uh, let's see how we're doing. We're, we're only going at the speed of sound now. Merely the speed of sound. This is still faster than most uh, aircraft I fly in this game. Uh, okay, come on. This is looking good, looking good. Oh, wait, nope. Maybe, maybe. No, okay, we're getting low. Um, nope, nope. Yeah, maybe, no, yes, no, yes, no! Oh, I was so close! Oh! Oh, I was almost gonna do it! Oh, if I had only been a few feet away, that would have looked amazing. Oh, well, it's a good thing this is a game and I can resurrect Charlie Kerman. Let's go back and try some other stuff with this dude. So, of course, it has no landing gear and landing is gonna be an issue. Um, well, the, the trick to landing this is... It's a question of how much of the aircraft you can bring back to the ground, uh, or rather leave intact. So here's a, let's see if we can attempt this here. No, we're gonna try and, we're gonna slide along the ground speed here. 180, no, 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 no. Yeah, just skipping along the ground here. Okay, so now, Cutting power, we've flown some distance, we've picked up our speed, now we've got to bleed off this speed somehow. And, I mean, I guess the only way I could touch down smoothly would be to pull into a vertical and then fire up the engines and land it on its tail. But actually, even without an engine, it holds the air particularly well. I was able to glide for a long way in this. 
even with these tiny wings. In fact, I'm gaining altitude and traveling at you know, merely 30 meters per second. So now I'm kind of kind kind of coming down, and I'm not sure if I can actually get any traction. A bit more. No, 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 no. Uh, well, there. Oh. Well, you see, I got the cockpit and the pilot down intact. Can't say better than that. I mean, well, you can actually. Better down in one piece, as I've said before. And so, I mean, if I look at this, it reminds me strongly of uh, one of the Messerschmitts. They built the Messerschmitt rocket planes. They built towards the end of World War II. Those uh, things were basically a delta wing, and they would fly at ridiculous speeds and spook in one of the all the other planes in the sky. But the the rocket fuel only lasted for a very short time. So they would fly up as interceptors, fly through, and then get out of there. And then to land, they had they, they had skids. They didn't have proper landing gear. They actually dropped. They had wheels that were attached to the plane that they were then dropped off as they took as they flew into the sky. Except sometimes the the gear wouldn't drop off correctly and trying to land one of the planes with the gear still attached apparently was a very dangerous experience and there's a great interview I remember with one of the pilots who who was in fact a woman um, she uh, managed to land it but she smashed up her face because they you know it basically pivoted forward into the ground there look all the parts are intact they're just not working anymore so that was a successful landing that's a uh, got to fly a little further next time, huh? Uh, what else can we do with this? Let's go for another fly around this base again. Or maybe not. Come on, just it takes it takes just a little more than that to get it going. But once it's going, okay. Try to get it on the back. Oh. Oh no, yeah. Even at low velocities. Oh look, the wing survived this time. That's good. I like the way the, the wing on the right is still suffering from airflow and is finding itself moving vertical due to the airflow over it. It's a very efficient wing, obviously. Let us try again. Yeah, it'd be nice to have landing skids. So that you could, you know, try and land these really tiny things. Like it spins, it spins like that brilliantly, huh? Okay, let's go try buzzing the airbase again, or the the spaceport or whatever. Whoa! No, 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 no. Okay, a uh, little out of control there. And uh, let's let's try buzz the control tower. Yay! Nice. Okay, what else can we see? Just fly around. Oh look, let's let's fly over the monolith. Come on, bring it round. Let's see how close I can get. 400 meters up. Let's see how low. Just remember, the ground is like 60 meters up. So if I can get it, you know, below 160. Oh, did it. oh. yep, gonna buzz him at 100 meters. That's not bad. 100 meters is 300 feet, or 330 feet for you guys that still speak um, American. Let's come around over the water. We're just running this at like. This is. We haven't adjusted the throttle. We're still running it. Barely the throttle needed to get vertical to start with. There we go. It actually turns a little better when you're flying at slightly lower thrust. And of course, it's going to have way better endurance. Yep. There we go. Buzzing another bit of debris. Okay. Now let's go into landing mode again. Or actually, now let's try and do a loop the loop here. See if we can bleed off speed like that. What I'm trying to do is get my plane to actually go into a tail slide, but I don't think that's going to happen. Uh, actually, this may not be such a good idea. Uh, yes. If you're going to do a loop the loop, make sure you have enough floor beneath you. Okay, well, there is another way um, you can... Well, there's another interesting thing you can do, actually. We've, we've seen this a couple of times. Let's, uh, let's just fly along at low level, and I'll show you a little trick here. Well, a little exploit or something, I don't know. Just gonna try and skim the surface using the, the shadow as my guide for altitude here. Try to get it up as fast as I can. So I can have the most epic experience. 
There's some more debris from other crashed planes. I might go out and recover those one of those days. It'd be nice, you know, in the campaign mode to have to be able to um, reacquire resources by picking up debris that's sitting around. Okay, yeah, just skimming the ground at about... Uh, oh, there we go. Oops, jump out. And bounce along the ground at uh, 600 miles an hour. I'm Scott Manley. Do what I say, not what I do. Fly safe.